So one word on Sierra, if you haven't heard of Sierra, uh, Sierra Circuits has been in business for a while. We've really made a name for ourselves for high technology product and also making it easier for the designer to um, you know, get feedback on any issues they might have uh, and you know, preparing the design for manufacturability essentially. Uh, so yeah, these have been very trying times uh, for our company over the last three years. And so we appreciate all the support that we're getting from our customers and our vendors um, and our PCB designers. So thank you very much for that. I myself have been doing this for a while and I try and learn something new every day. This is a quick uh, table of contents for today. Uh, so we'll go uh, over some very basic things about, you know, layout considerations for HDI, why HDI might be better for you, better suited for your design. Uh, some material selection um, considerations along with a demo of our material selector tool. Um, stack up considerations along with a demo of our stack up tool. And, uh, you know, so on and so forth. And honestly, ask questions because that also guides the presentation. I want you guys to get the answers that you want, uh, you know, from this. So what's really key here is to know why would you consider HDI in the first place, right? So. HDI is a technology that's been around for a while and there are still, uh, there's lots of good reasons to use HDI and there's lots of bad reasons to use HDI. If you're designing, if you're a layout designer and you're having trouble breaking out your design and then you add another two layers to your design and you keep adding layer pairs to finish your routing, that is the wrong way to use HDI. The best way to use HDI is to plan a little bit ahead of time and visualize your stack up. And that's why we have a stack up tool. Make sure your stack up is manufacturable and then design to that stack up that you've created. And a lot of our customers, they standardize on some stack ups once they're comfortable with them. And that's a great idea to do. But sometimes every design is very unique. So it's important to know what kind of structures you can have in HDI. So here, you know, the first kind of picture is you have a blind via from layer one to two, and then you have a, what's called a skip via from one to three. So that's possible to do with uh, laser drill microvias, but really we encourage laser drill microvias from just one layer to the next uh, and no more. So microvia is like the number one, I would say characteristic of an HDI, what defines HDI is an HDI board, which is a laser drilled microvia. The other things that describe uh, HDI is having high performance, thin dielectrics and fine lines. Um, and then also some considerations about signal integrity as uh, we will discuss. But basically the idea is that if you have a tight or densely packed board that you want to reduce the number of through holes uh, because through holes are hard to register harder than laser and you can have quality issues with your through holes in terms of drill the coppers and through holes take a lot of space or real estate uh, so you need larger pads and you know that takes up real estate in every layer Whereas a blind via or a buried via only takes up real estate on that layer pair. So another kind of consideration that you can have is use your top and bottom layers as ground planes and the adjacent layer as a power distribution layer. So the ground connection to the component pins can be made directly on the outer layers and the connections to the power distribution layers can be made uh, with the microvias. So, and then as you're deciding your stack up, you wanna make sure you have effective return paths. Uh, so that's always a very important um, consideration in your stack up and your layout design. 
So blind beans can be placed on the inner layers to provide the additional breakout space, um, you know, and then that way center to center distances on inner layers can be adjusted to offer more room for your trace routing. I think people call it channel routing as well. There's also a, a technology called VNPAD, which is has really um, exploded in terms of usage. Uh, we do that every day on many, many designs because of assembly related uh, concerns. So VNPAD is also a good option. In terms of material selections, um, we do have a lot of information on selecting the right PCB materials, but basically you choose um, materials for electrical, thermal, and mechanical properties. Um, mechanical properties are very important. And then also material selection as it relates to um, high-speed design or microvias, uh, you want to pick the right uh, glass styles and resin content for that as well. Uh, you want to make sure that you have a proper CTE. Um, so let's say if you have a large BGA um, or an LGA, you know, you want to make sure that you're picking the right materials for that assembly application. Um, and then uh, I mentioned this already, but you would like, it's better to have tight glass weaves uh, than not. So we have a material selector tool, which allows you to see what are the alternatives you know, based on your ranges of electrical performance, you know, let's say you have a DK or DF requirement, uh, you can compare materials uh, in that vein, as well as using your, the slash sheets or slash numbers. So am I handing off to do a demo at this point? Yes, Pranav is going to show how to use a material selector for three minutes. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, so to uh, open a visit our piece of selectors, what we need to do is visit our website, uh, project.com, and we have material selector uh, under designers tool set. So we can see material selector. And to open materials, you need to click on this get started now button and you'll be redirected to the material selector tool. So, um, Pranav, hold on. So we can open that tool. Oh, no, never mind. Yeah. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, so uh, this is the material selector tool uh, which we have. So when you open the tool, there are no filters which are applied. Uh, we have filters depending uh, depending on different properties so you can no, no, there is a lag. Have filters on electrical property no, no, there's a lag okay if you can uh, okay. try and okay. if you can log out and log in again and we can try again in the meantime uh, i'll uh, um i can continue presenting okay. unless someone else wants to present from your side Uh, you can keep going, Hamid, and uh, we can just demo the material, like the material selector with the stack of designer. Yeah, I think that's good. Can you see my screen? Yep. Okay. Yeah, so when he logs back in or when someone else wants to present, we'll continue from there. So uh, in terms of best design practices for HDI, uh, again, material considerations, there, these are some glass styles. Uh, that you see in this chart um, with various materials and it it shows you the press out thicknesses um, you know along with um, let's say the uh, the glass style number uh, it really depends on the resin percentage and when we're doing our stack up or when we offer you a stack up it's with the press out thicknesses in mind which in order to get the press out we consider or assume the copper weight and the copper percentage for those layers. Uh, so that's how press out is uh, finally calculated. And it's also due to experience that we have. So 
after we laminate, uh, which we do thousands of times a month, uh, we measure the uh, press out thickness. So what glass styles, what basically went into the calculation and then what came out of the calculation. And so as we do this, we notice that certain materials behave um, very nicely, meaning repeatable, and certain materials are not repeatable. So when you pick a lesser cost material or a material that a fabricator is not aware of or hasn't used in the past, the fabricator has no reference. Um, and if it's a less, lesser cost material, then you're gonna have variation uh, in that material's performance, which is probably not good. It can lead to performance variation in your final product and, and, and or worse, even worse quality, um, quality issues. Now, certain materials are more, um, let's say, HDI friendly. Uh, so you need a material that can withstand, let's say, three temperature excursions minimum, maybe four. And so a higher uh, reliable material um, would be a better selection or a better choice. That, and that is because of lamination cycles as well as um, the assembly reflow as well as touch up and rework. And then if you have any rework on your end, you know, there's a lot of thermal excursions your board is going through. If you don't pick a material that can withstand that, then you would definitely have um, degradation in the material that can be a source of root cause in the future. So I've talked about, um, you know, kind of the glass styles is really important and you can get the details of what glass styles to pick and how to pick them, or you can just use our stack up planner. So that's my pitch on the stack up planner. When we predict the press out thickness, that's when we say, okay, is the design suitable to that stack up? So is the uh, blind via ratio, aspect ratio correct or good for us to plate? So if you have a, you know, six mil blind via and a four mil of dielectric press out, then that's gonna be very easy to plate. And when you laser drill, you wanna get the, you know, the kind of the funnel uh, shape so that you can also plate it properly and you want to laser drill a little bit into the copper underneath to have a good connection to the, to the layer below. So all those are considerations uh, for properly um, getting a good plating, drill, laser drill and plating. Um, there's a question about glass weaves. I, I think I'll save that for later. But the, because I'm not sure I understand, it says, does the glass style number itself based on calculations between different weaves? Um, I don't think so. I don't think there's any logic behind that. But I can get you, a, I can ask our expert on glass weaves and, and give you an answer. So thanks for asking the first question, anonymous person. And uh, I hope there's a lot more questions to come. It makes it more interesting for me. Okay. So um, aside from the uh, aspect ratio of a microvia, you should be considering other things in your stack up, which would be things like you know, what is your finest pitch BGA or your highest pin count device? How are you gonna break that, uh, those uh, signals out? How many signal layers are you going to need to break those out? And how many power and ground layers will you be needing? So these are some of the considerations that go into, you know, designing your stack up or selecting a proper stack up. So you can think about all of that or have experience and that would work. Or you can also cross check your experience and knowledge with our signal layer estimator. 
so these tools haven't come out of thin air. They've come because we ourselves find them useful when doing layouts and we want to assist our customers who are doing the layouts. So I recommend trying this tool out. Um, is Parnav back? Does he want to try and do a demo of this? Uh, so we can um so, yeah, why don't you try do all and the, see? Uh, so I think we should do all the demos together. Uh, okay. Let me uh okay, you guys can see my screen? Okay, and then I'll just power through the rest. So, um, so for stack up considerations, you know, number of layers in HDIPCD is determined usually by the highest pin count device. Um, not always, if you're just trying to reduce your XY and there really is no uh, fine pitch device, you can still kind of utilize HDI as well as for signal integrity concerns. Um, you want always a balanced stack up. Uh, that's, that's just a no brainer. And I think everyone is aware of that. Uh, so it's not just copper distribution uh, to get a balanced stack up, but it's actually how is the stack up going to be built in the manufacturing floor? So if you have two sub lambs, that's a very common structure. If, you know, let's say you have uh, eight layer board, you can have, you know, one sub, sub lamb, one to four, and the other one, you know, five to eight. So if you're gonna do two sub lambs like that, and then you have a final drill, make sure that there's plenty of drill to copper on that final drill, because you can have one sub move differently from another sub, even if, you, even, even if the manufacturer takes precautions for that. And uh, so that's one thing. And then if you do a, a, you know, kind of an unbalanced subs, you know, where let's say you have a three layer and then you expect that to be laminated to a five layer, you know, that's, that's definitely not balanced. And that strategy, even if the copper weights are balanced, um, could result into issues. So there's multiple reasons. Um, uh, to well, there's multiple uh, thoughts that have to go into having a balanced uh, construction. So we have a stack up um, tool. Like right now, I would say it's more of a library of stack ups. Uh, and then in about a month's time, we would have, you know, a, a different flavor of the tool where you can create your own stack ups from scratch. Um, but I think templates really help 90% of the cases. So uh, we'll, we'll let um, the demo kind of showcase this tool but it's based on the concept that I've talked about earlier in this uh, presentation. So sequential lamination is how, usually how an HDI board is built. So if you have two big sub lamps, like I was talking about before, you know, four layers and four layers combined to an eight layer, the two subs will be laminated at the same time, but then the final lamb Will probably have will will be happening in sequence, so that is the second lamination. So just understand what subs get laminated first, and then what gets laminated next after that. And so sequential uh, laminations means there's more time involved, and the and the material has to go through our facility multiple times. So it has to go through, uh, you know, lamination. So imaging and etching, lamination, uh, drilling, plating, you know, if there's being pad on that, on that sub, then it has to go through that process. All that adds time 
uh, in sequence and cost. So sequential laminations take longer to do and they cost more. And the more laminations you have, I would say the higher uh, chance of a failure at the end. So really understand, do you need that fourth lamination, sequential lamination in your design? Or can you somehow figure out how to keep it within three sequential laminations? So in this drawing that I have, or on, on the right, you know, the center sub where you see the drill through hole, the four layer, that would be lam uh, manufactured like a four layer board and you'll drill and plate, and then you're gonna laminate the next adjacent layers on top of that. So it'd be a six layer board that now goes through the manufacturing process from end to end where you're laser drilling and plating, um, you know, that on top of that new sub. And then you'll go again through your final lamination and you'll process your outer layers. So you, a good, a good design HDI starts from the center and builds out and keeps it to, you know, let's say three laminations. So there's good questions in the chats. I'm going to leave them for later. and or our design team can answer some of those. So another uh, consideration for HDI is what layers are you gonna have on, uh, what layers are gonna have control impedance? So you can't just arbitrarily decide your HDI stack up and not know which layers you're gonna have, you know, your impedance structures on because of course the dielectric layers play a big role. And so you have, if you have a blind via, we were talking about aspect ratio of the blind via. And if you have, uh, let's say some impedances on that layer as well, referencing another layer. So that dielectric thickness will play a role in your trace and space, let's say in differential pairs and the copper weights. So all that has to be taken into account to achieve the desired impedance that you're looking for. Um, so, you know, rely on the fabricator to calculate all of that or look at our stack of planner. So for power and ground planes, uh, you know, Having a split power plane is fine. Um, you know, we can use two orthogonal layers to distribute the power as a mesh structure. That's, that's a good strategy. And then by placing signals between the different voltages, we can increase the number of split planes um, for up to eight different voltage rails, as an example. For signal integrity considerations for HDI, so you know HDI does help you reduce your stubs, your via stubs. You can also do a back drill strategy. Back drill eats up all the real estate, uh, so you don't get the advantage of you know better uh, or more utilization of the real estate with back drill, but it's a it's also a possibility to do that. Uh, in terms of breakout, you know, look at your, look at your BGA, look at, you know, if you can, you know, move some pins around kind of a thing so that, you know, you can really create your channels of where you want to route. So BGA breakout, is a key part of your design strategy. And uh, you need to know what kind of um, 
in combination with the stack up, you know, you need to create your breakout strategy. I wouldn't just do a breakout strategy without thinking about your stack up. So when in our stack up tool, when you put in your BGA and the pitch, all that is taken into consideration. So I'd mentioned earlier, there's channel routing strategies. Um, so how you, how you arrange your drills, your laser drills to provide channels for for routing, basically. There's a concept of swing vias. Uh, so this is also fine. Um, you should be careful of having a very flat surface for your uh, BGA. And you should also be careful of solder wicking into the vias. Those are the considerations, uh, not just with, you know, just breaking out is not enough. But to think about assembly us along with that. That's why V and pad is good because you get a flat surface and flat surface is good. But yes, people do do other breakout strategies. Uh, but again, it really depends upon your application, your, the size of your BGA. How is that, you know, are you going to get any soldering defects because of your, your breakout strategy, whether you're using dog bone or not? So here's another um, strategy called the boulevard structure. Uh, I think these all are coming, all came from uh, a book. Um, so we can reference the book later. So you, you know, you can kind of see all the different breakout strategies that exist. But in this case, you know, this breakout strategy claims to reduce the crosstalk. And I know our team's working on a crosstalk calculator. So as we deploy a certain breakout strategy, you can calculate potential crosstalk. And that kind of summarizes the presentation and I'll hand it over for a demo of the tools that I had referred to uh, during the webinar. Uh, I'll, I'll share my screen. Uh, Uh, so first, uh, we look at our material selector tool. So, so from in this tool, we have uh, different sections for uh, different properties. So you can apply filters uh, on uh, electrical properties, thermal properties, etc. So you can start with a board type. So you can either choose a flex or a, a rigid board and that material you can uh, click and select. You can choose the halogen free. So if you have, if your requirement, uh, you have, you need a halogen free material, you can say yes, or you can say all. Uh, if you have specific uh, high thermal conductivity materials, then you can just click on this button and you can uh, apply the filter. Also, you can uh, choose between the um, electrical properties. So. From this drop down, you can choose the different speed loss. Uh, so we have four different options here to choose from. Uh, you can also, if you know uh, what is the maximum frequency content or like data rise, fastest signal rise time or data transfer rate. If you know any one of these, you can enter that parameter and it will be used as a filter uh, to choose the material that will be, uh, that is appropriate with your input. You can also choose the dielectric constant. Uh, so you can set a limit to what dielectric constant that is required. Uh, you can choose the dissipation factor range using the filter. Also from this dropdown, you can choose the CTI class or filter. So class zero, class one, etc. And uh, so that filter will be applied. 
I can also choose the electrical strength. So if you have a specific requirement of some electrical, direct electrical strength, then you can choose uh, from this slide bar, you can choose that. Uh, so then in this section, there are filters for thermal properties like uh, glass transition temperature, uh, thermal decomposition temperature, or you can also choose uh, CT, the coefficient of thermal expansion in XY axis, also in Z axis. So you can set up the, what, or what are your requirements and you can uh, run the filter. So you don't need to apply all the filters to choose. You can apply one or two filters and you can just submit and you, you'll get the materials. So we also have the chemical properties like moisture absorption. We can set a maximum moisture absorption limit. If you have like calf resistant material, if you want a calf resistant material, you can say yes to this and it will show only the calf resistance material or you can keep all. So it will show all the materials. So this filter will not be applied. Uh, we also have this help button. So where you can read what, uh, what a calf is so the conductive anodic filament so this is the if kf definition uh, so we have this help at uh, all the locations uh, you can apply the mechanical properties like tensile modulus tensile strength fractal strength and uh, your material will be selected accordingly also if you don't want to apply any of the above materials, you can keep them as it is and you can filter only using a material. So we have different families to choose from. You can choose FR4 material, you can choose a polyamide. So that way also you can filter out the materials. You can filter out using a manufacturer. So if you have a specific manufacturer in mind, you can just add that as a filter and you can filter out the materials. Also, you can choose the IPC or an IPC slash number. So you can choose IPC and you can choose the slash numbers and you can filter out. So that those materials which are, which belongs to that IPC slash number will be filtered out. So once you have applied all the filters, you need to click on this go submit button. And so your filter, uh, your materials, or whichever materials which are applicable to that, those, those filters, those will be shown. So here we have six, six entries. So we have the isola material, uh, then there's uh, some Nelco materials. This is the money, uh, material name. Uh, we have the compare button. So you can select multiple materials in this compare and you can compare their properties. So there's a compare button at the bottom and you can click on this compare button. A new pop-up will come and it will show you a material comparison between the materials which you have selected. Oh, sorry. I think yeah so so this is the material comparison this this is all the data of materials shown in a tabular format so that it is easier no. for you to yeah uh, we can't see the comparison oh so i need to share the full screen sorry So this way, uh, you'll see the material comparison. Uh, so all the properties of materials are listed in this table. And so you can do a side-by-side -side comparison of uh, different materials. You can also view individual material. The same kind of pop-up will come. Once you click on this view button, uh, you'll be able to see the properties of only the material which you have selected. Uh, then we have the application area. Uh, this then the next column is the HDI preferred. So there are some materials which are not preferred for HDI stack up. So they'll have no and the other will have yes. Then we have a column which will tell you if the material is offered by Sierra or not. So you can see that the few materials, the F, uh, isola materials, they are offered by Sierra, and then there are some materials which are not. And then the rest all the table will have the properties of the material. There is a DK, there's DF, the glass transition temperature, thermal conductivity, uh, electrical strength, uh, moisture absorption, and all etc. All the um, properties of the materials will be listed. 
now if we don't have the properties then that will be we'll keep it blank whichever materials properties we know will we have shown uh, shown those material properties so this is a, a material selector tool so if you do any changes in the uh, filter so you need to click on the go submit button again so that your results to reflect your uh, choice so if you do any changes in the filter you need to click on the button and the material table will be updated with the new material then uh, we also discussed about our signal layer and plane layer estimator tool so this is the signal plane layer estimator tool uh, in this tool you need to give some basic board and circuit information so you need to give a uh, the pcb your uh, weight of the pcb uh, you need to give how many total number of pins are there in your circuit uh, you need to give the wiring channel weight say 100 mils you need to give the via pad diameter uh, minimum trace and space weight and you need to press the calculate button so what this will this will give you how many number of signal layers which are required for your design and also how many number of power layers which are required for your design so you know that roughly uh, what is the total number of layers which are required? So this uh, input which I have given, it requires a eight layer board. So that's a approximation, approximate value. You can uh, know like how many number of signal and power layers which are needed. So, uh, so this is the signal and power layer estimator tool. And finally is, is our stack up designer. So this, mm, this is the stack up designer. Uh, you need to give some basic board information, such as your project name, or oh, sorry, to your project name, uh, region number, say length and width of the board. Or uh, you need to give us the target PCB thickness. So we, from this drop down, you need to select what is the finished PCB thickness that you are expecting. Uh, we have uh, say six different thicknesses which are available. You can choose any one of them. Or uh, there is also the next thing is you need to select the PCB material. What material you want for the PCB? So from this drop down, you can choose the material. So we also have a material compare guide, and when you click on this, a pop up will come and this will give you uh, a list of uh, materials. So the, the way you saw uh, the material comparison on material selector, you can also do the comparison on this page. It also, you can view the properties and choose the material. So from this drop down. Next is the PCB type. So we have a rigid right now. So you need to select rigid. So once all the fields are done on the first section the next section will come and in this section you need to see like what approach you want to take to design a pc you design your stack up so there are two approaches to select from so either you know the number of layers which are required in the design uh or if you have a complex bga and you don't know how many number of layers which will be required in your design so in that case you need to select the second option so uh so you can choose uh, any one of them. So if you know number of signal layers, you can go with the first option. Um, so once you select the uh, approach that you want to take, uh, the next section will come. And so I have selected, I know the number of signal layers which are required. So in this section, you need to choose a uh, number of layers uh, from this drop down. Say I need a eight layer board and uh, I need a four signal, four plane, my signal plane combination. Once everything is filled, you need to click on this run stack up designer. So once you click on the run stack up designer, it will generate this solutions table. So in this table will give you a different stack up uh, solutions to your uh, selections above. So this is a eight layer, four signal, four plane board. So we, as per our selection, these are filled. Uh, also, we have, uh, you can, in this column, it'll tell you uh, if it's a standard or a HDI. So standard or HDI depends on what kind of VR structure it has. So for example, a standard will have only a through hole VR. 
uh, HDI will have through hole as well as blind and buried vias. Yeah. Or uh, the the number in front of the HDI, it tells you how many number of sequential laminations will be there in the in the stack up. So sequential laminations will allow you to have a buried via as well. So you can click on this help icon and this will give you uh, uh, like a definition and a sort of image to see what HDI is. So if you can see this HDI, there's only a through hole via. Uh, so in case of HDI zero, there is a, a blind via or uh, there's no buried vias in this case. You can, it only allows additional set of blind vias. In HDI one, there are blind as well as buried vias. So there's a one sequential lamination with the basic lamination. So that's why it is HDI one. And etc. you can go through this. So this kind of help is available at every point you can uh, uh, in the tool. Uh, we also have uh, different technology levels. Now technology level determines uh, what the pad sizes, the trace sizes, the higher technology level, the finer the mm, parameters get. So technology level three is finer than technology level two and technology level two is finer than technology level one. We also have the cost index, which will tell you a relative idea of how costly the stack up will be. So as you can see a technology level three stack up is costlier than a technology level one stack up. So you get a relative idea of what uh, technology level is. So once you're finalized in this, you can uh, click on this report button. So let us take a HDI one stack up. So I'll click on this report button and it will open up the report. So yeah, I want to interrupt. I want to interrupt something and ask the yeah. attendees a question. Um, and you guys can chat the answer or just answer by unmuting yourself, I think. But basically in terms of cost index, would you rather have an actual price here, an actual budgetary price? So if you give this information and say I want you know five pieces, ten pieces that we return back with the actual dollar difference. Is that something that would be helpful or really not needed at this time since the design should not be should not be done at this point. So that's a question to the audience and you guys can uh, chat it, chat your opinion. You know, do you want to see an actual dollar and then which would be an estimate and then the dollar difference or a relative uh, price through price index is fine. All right, sorry to interrupt. Please continue. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so this is the uh, HDI one, uh, eight layer HDI one board. So we can see uh, the first lamination is from one to seven, and then there's one sequential lamination of uh, from one to eight. Uh, so about this. In the report about this stack up, these are the fields that you have. These are the information that you have given on the previous page. So the board information, material, etc., is uh, it's mentioned here. Uh, this is a rough image of how the stack up will look like. Mm, then this is the actual stack up in the report. So this has all the uh, information which is needed for a stack up. So they have the layer number. What, what materials on each layer. Uh, this is the, the third column is the layer type. So it will give you which layer, uh, layer is a signal layer and which layer is a plane layer. So signal plane layer combination is uh, shown. I uh, also have the copper percentages given. So then this is the stack up. So the blue one is the through hole uh, mechanical VR and then these are the laser VRs which are possible. Uh, then we have the finished thickness column. So in this column, uh, it will tell you like what is the actual press thickness of that layer. So your base thickness might be different and actual press thickness will be different. So that press thickness and all the even the copper thicknesses are mentioned. And at the bottom, you'll see the total finished thickness. So this is the sum of all the thicknesses and this this is the finished thickness of the board uh, which you will get. Then is the base dielectric thickness column. Uh, next column is the plating thickness. So wherever you need a plating, so that 
plating thickness, how much plating will be done is shown in this column. Uh, then the last two columns are regarding the dielectric. So we have the dielectric description and the dielectric constant of that dielectric material which is used. So you can see this is the 370HR pre preg has 3.6 mil and its dielectric constant is 3.6. So this is the uh, stack up table. Then comes to the adding control impedances. Now to add control impedances, you need to click on this plus icon and it will open a flash fresh or uh, line and you need to select uh, what layer what layer signal layer is or uh, what is the target impedance or uh, what's the model type and you need to give the reference layer so this way uh, we will give you uh, what transmission line model it is so this is a quoted micro strip and you need to click on this calculate button and it will calculate the impedance uh, it will calculate the trace weight and it will give you what is the calculated impedance and uh, the information you can click on this view button and it will open up our impedance calculator tool and it will show you the all the results of the calculations that are done. So not all the results are displayed in this table. So if you want to see other parameters like we calculate uh, inductance, capacitance, we calculate effective ER so that you can see when you click on this view button and you'll be forwarded to our impedance calculator page. And at the bottom we have this technology parameter table. So this table will give you what's the Minimum uh, uh, VR pad and VR diameters will give you what trace minimum thicknesses to be used for each technology level and what is their relative cost index. Uh, also, there's a VR set information which will help you uh, read like what from what what layer there is a VR which is present or connection which is possible. So that information is given in this uh, VR set information. Uh, you can save the stack up, and this saved stack up. You can whenever you log in the next time you'll be able to see the saved stack up. So this is the stack up ID which is generated and you can see the stack up. You can open the report as it is the next time when you log in to our uh, website with your uh, login ID. Yeah. Uh, so that's the uh, stack up designer. Uh, Thank you, Pranav, for the demo. Uh, I believe we have answered a lot of questions. If you have more, please use the Q&A. Uh, Amit, Anil, there's another question. Um, in the Q&A, can the attendees see each other's questions and our answers? If not, can we send out all the questions that we got with answers to everyone? I thought some of their good questions that everyone should benefit from. Yes, I think they can see the open questions and the answers, okay. but we can also send the answers tomorrow. Okay, great. So, and then Mike is asking, you know, what are some PCB parameters that are hard to maintain or control as you manufacture the board? Um, that is the whole kitchen sink question. Um, so I'm going to say it kind of depends on the design, uh, but to say, you know, like what are the most important things to look for? in your PCB parameters, um, it's definitely for reliability, it's drill to copper. Uh, and, you know, remember that we drill larger than the finished hole size that you specify. So when you're designing your board, keep that in mind. So if you have a 10 mil finished drill size, we'll probably drill, let's say at 12 and plate down to get to your nominal 10 mil finished hole size. So our drill to copper is starting from 12, not the 10. So I would say drill to copper is a big one. Um, and when you have HDI specifically, as we do the laminations, the material 
registration and the final mechanical drill of copper is the most important, um, let's say PCB specification that could basically cause, you know, us to have a huge scrap or the customer to have less reliable product because as a drill, so a finished, a finished drill hole can have wicking and then in the wicking you can definitely have copper growth over time so if you have another let's say well if the distance isn't enough you could have fail field, field failures basically so i would say that's the number one thing to look for um number two is for uh hdi specifically is picking the right material so it actually is it doesn't have to do with the design parameters like for example a rogers 4000 series is not as conducive to sequential lamb as let's say a megtron or an isola i speed so i wouldn't use rogers materials in a sequential lamb design um so though so i hope that helps um I can think about that question some more and um, come up with a better answer, but that's what has come to my mind right now. So thank you guys so much uh, for attending. I hope you got something out of it. Um, if you learn one thing a day, I think that would that's a success for that day. So I hope that we were here to help with that. And thank you, Sierra team, for doing the demo and answering the, the great questions that came from our audience today. I look forward to the next one. Thanks, Lucy. Thank you. Bye.